Hello, I'm Kathleen Maraccio. I'm a library assistant for San Antonio Public Libraries. And today, I will share with you some interesting facts about tea while I show you how to make a gas station or dollar store hat into something fun and stylish that you could wear to any picnic or tea party. You will need hats, a glue gun, glue sticks, and decoration. I get florals from the dollar store and craft and department stores. I also like to use odds and ends from my sewing kit, such as ribbon. And don't forget the button box. In it you'll find buttons and retired jewelry pieces that'll help you make some fun and interesting designs. Let's start here. I've decided to recycle this tie. I really appreciate the colors and the pattern. I think it'll make a very nice band for this particular hat. First, I'll decide where the front and back of the hat is. So I'll think this is the front of the hat, right here, and here is the back. I've already used the glue gun to fashion a rough bow on the back of the tie after folding it in such a way as to make the band. I'm going to fit it around the crown of the hat so that it just meets where the brim meets the bottom of the crown. Second only to water, tea is the most popular beverage in the world. It is estimated that six billion cups of tea are consumed worldwide. Tea is considered part of a healthy diet in many parts of the world. Green tea is popular for this reason and it is known for its anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties as well. I think that I will use some of this material from the florals I purchased at the craft store onto the back of this hat to give it a fresh and natural look. The glue gun is rather hot, so please use care when using it. Tea time means different things in different parts of the world. Sometimes it is a formal affair, as with the Japanese tea ceremony. Other times it's most casual. I think that I could add yet another accent to our hat, perhaps another floral, something light. And giving it just a touch more dimension. This hat, after being set to dry for just a minute or two, is ready for the party.
six billion cups of tea each day? Hmm, <laughs> I had better get to making more hats. Tea has a romantic side. We spoke of the grace and meditative beauty of the Japanese tea ceremony, and there's the universal allure of the culinary delights usually served at a traditional tea party here in the West. I'm using tool such as the purple and the black to add a splash of color and texture to the side of this hat. Here is the front. I like to work with interesting materials, such as the feather boa. In different colors at the dollar store, I find it's whimsical and adds a splash of excitement. I also like to find different scraps of material and the scrap bin at my craft store or unusual items such as this vintage veil I found at the thrift shop. You'll also find materials like this at garage or estate sales. I think I'll use this veil on this hat to create a touch of whimsical elegance. I will pull it down over the side and a little bit in the front and position it here on the crown on the back of the hat so that there is enough to come over the brim and hide part of the face. I'll use the glue gun to affix it to the back. Please be careful with the glue gun it's rather hot, and when working with sheer materials such as this veil, it can be delicate. So you do want to be cautious when using it. Now, tea time means different things to different people all over the world. In the UK, it is still considered a dinner of sorts. And is usually an uncomplicated affair served in the late afternoon or early evening and given to the children before their bedtime. It would consist of finger sandwiches, bread with jam, a pastry or two, and of course lots of cream and sugar for the tea. The adults would eat their dinner much later in the evening after the kids were tucked in bed, sometimes as late as nine o'clock at night. Now, I could add a little more to this item. I do like the butterflies I find at the dollar store. I can get four in a pack for just a dollar. And this might provide a touch of color and interest to the side of this hat. Now, high tea is a different matter. High tea would involve finger foods both savory and sweet, and it could be an elegant affair served in the salon of a grand hotel, or it might be something known as the worker's tea, which was actually quite hearty and had several courses for the working class after a long day of work. In either event, it would include meat pies, pate, cheeses, finger sandwiches, cucumber sandwiches are a favorite, all sorts of pastries and shortbreads and things such as scones and creamed horns are especially popular and can be found here in America. This hat is ready for the party. Let's work with the ball cap next. 
I found this braided ribbon in my scrap bin and I think it will look just right on this cap. I did use the pinking shears, these scissors especially designed so that when you cut the fabric it will not fray as much on the end. So while I glue this onto our cap, I'll let you know that India is in fact one of the largest producers of tea in the world, 70% of which is consumed in country. According to ancient legend, in 2737 BC, the first cup of tea or cha was brewed when dried leaves accidentally fell into a cup of boiling water served to one emperor, Shen Nong. Translated as the divine farmer, he is the hero of Chinese and Vietnamese folklore. This hat was made by completely removing the rim, that is the brim from the crown, which was then finished off with this ribbon and a matching sunflower accent for a little whimsy in color. This black straw hat, with the help of a needle and thread, was made to have one side up with the bright pink silk flowers and some jewelry pieces from a now retired piece of jewelry for a little more flair. This hat can be worn on the front this way or on the side or the back. Well, whatever your idea of a springtime craft, these ideas and more can be found on our online catalog. For more information, visit mysapple.org or call 210-207-2500.